Welcome back to another platform builder tutorial. My name is Matthew or Ting Thing. I am the developer of this fine program. Today we are looking at page nine of the manual, which is about uploading your own sounds and images. This feature is exclusive to Platform Builder Pro. Now, if you've made it this far in the tutorials and you don't own Pro, then I'd encourage you to really consider buying. We've kept it cheap, probably less than what you'll spend next time you go out for dinner. It's a lifetime purchase to unlock everything we have to offer. And of course that helps to support what we do here, making this possible for you. Now, if you want, you can buy from Steam, or if you'd rather see more of your payment go directly to us, then visit our website, theplatformbuilder.com downloads. And right there, we have a button that you can use as well. Doing that will email you a unique access code which you can plug into the Steam website to unlock Pro. All right, enough about that. Let's get started with uploading your own resources into Platform Builder. All of your resources can be uploaded from Game Setup. Of course, you can get there from the menu, or you can press P on your keyboard for the hotkey into Game Setup. Right off the bat, we see many different places we can go to upload your own resources. You can upload music, backgrounds, sprites, sprite sheets, tiles. Also under sound effects, you have some controls to upload there too. Let's just work our way through this starting with music. This takes me to a music manager. So I'll create a new track, enter in, and this is about as simple as it gets. This is where I select the music file that I want to use and import into my game. You'll notice that it has to be an AUG file, and there's reasons for that I don't want to get into, but this means if you have a WAV or MP3 or something, you'll need to convert it to AUG first. Plenty of websites can do this for you for free. You could try online-audio-converter.com if you'd like, whatever works. When you have your AUG file in there, you can play it to make sure it works. X out. And then under music, you will see a button for manager, and that is where you can select the music for your area. Test it out. And there we go, we have our music. Nice. P for game setup. If you want to upload a custom background, it works the same, except there are a lot more controls which you can explore by right clicking on stuff. Big thing is that we have multiple layers. Maybe you noticed how the built-in backgrounds of Platform Builder have different layers or elements. Closer elements move faster with the view and farther elements move slower with the view. This is called parallax scrolling and it gives a sense of depth. If you want to break up your background into different layers like this, you can do that or you can upload just one flat image and call it good. Again, once the background is ready, then you'll see the manager appear under backgrounds. And that's how you select it. Every background image will tile or repeat itself horizontally, but for areas, you have the option to tile it vertically. If you don't tile it vertically, then the color up here is going to be the same color as your top left pixel of the background image. P for game setup. Next, we have upload sprites and upload sprite sheets. Sprites are the images of your game. So it's the stuff that you see when you look at items or enemies or blocks or projectiles or whatever. If you want to add more sprites to your game, then go to upload sprites. Or if you want to change some of the built-in sprites of Platform Builder, then you will go to sprite sheets. If we go to upload sprites, again, make your sprite, enter in. There's a lot of tools for you to right click on and learn about. If you want animated sprites, then you'll need to use what is called a sprite strip. This is where each frame of your animation is placed side by side. In this case, I have a 32 by 32 sprite with four images in the animation. So the width of this image file is precisely four times the width of each frame. It's 128 by 32. Once everything is ready, then you will be able to select your sprite for custom enemies, items, projectiles, whatever, right here with the manager button. You can also place them directly into your game as a background image or a foreground image. So take your pick, click down here to open your manager, select the sprite, and then place it down. Just like that. P for game setup. Sprite sheets work a little bit differently. There's no manager this time. You just look for what you want to change. Download the template. Modify the template and then upload it back to the same place you got it from. For the example here, I have a pre-made template. And there we go. Any sprites which you can change are done from upload sprite sheets, except for 
character sprite sheets. Character sprite sheets are exported from the character designer. So if you want to change that, you'll have to go to the designer and export your sprite sheet. Make your changes, throw it back in, just like with any other sprite sheet. Of course, you can select from your custom sprites and choose from your sprite manager to make changes there as well, but we don't want that. Sound effects have the ability to replace current sound effects with an AUG file of your choosing, or you can open the sound effect manager, create new sound effects, which you can upload your sounds to. And then you would play those extra sound effects using the command prompt. If you don't already know how commands work, you can go to theplatformbuilder.com slash commands and learn all about it. Last would be your custom tiles. Uploading tiles is similar to uploading sprites, except instead of a single image for one thing, you have a single image that's divided up into a bunch of things. The most common use for tiles would be ground tiles. I have a simple tile set here that I'd like to try. So I'll pop that in, make sure Platform Builder knows how to split that up. In this case, there is no separation between each of these tiles, and so I will turn separation to zero. The size is right. The offsets are right because the tiles start in the very top left of the image. X out. And then in my item box, I can select uploaded tile sets, open the manager, choose my tile set, and then I am ready to go. Click down here again, or press T on your keyboard to open it back up. I could press T twice on my keyboard to throw it in the corner. It works similar to ground pieces we have already worked with. But in this case, Platform Builder doesn't know that it's ground, so I'll need to place some invisible ground blocks over these tiles so that my character can stand on them. If you want to change to a different tile set, go back here, and then in the top left, select Different Tile Set, and that will open your manager back up. But in this case, we only have one tile set, so it doesn't make a difference. Now, the built-in ground tiles of Platform Builder are super nice because you don't need invisible solid blocks. There's expand tiles, and of course, it works with the Smart Tool. So if you find yourself missing those features, you can actually enable those with uploaded tile sets. The only caveat is that you have to use the template. This will give you the image file for standard ground tiles. You can open that up, change it around, and then upload the tiles as another tile set and select ground behavior. For the sake of example, I have one that is already pre-made. And now, you have all of those features back. But here's the thing with tiles. It's very possible when working with custom tiles that you will see some undesirable lines showing up. This is not a platform builder thing, this is a Windows thing, and it has to do with how pixels are blended together. In order to get rid of this, you'll have to add a color buffer around your tiles. Thankfully, someone made a great little tool called Tileset Champion, which can do this for you automatically. It's a free program, I didn't make it, but lately it's been very difficult to find a download, so I made a redirect link that will take you straight there. Go to theplatformbuilder.com slash tilesetchampion to download. Extract the folder, open the exe, select your source file that you want to add the color buffer to, then you'll need to input the details. Two should be fine for the buffer size, and then generate. Back in Platform Builder, we open the tile set, upload the tile set, set it up. And now with our new color buffer, we won't be seeing those lines showing up between our tiles anymore. One last note before we wrap up, if you want to publish your games to the Explore section, then avoid uploading images or sounds which you don't have the right to use. This could result in your game not getting approved. Speaking of which, the next and final video of this tutorial series going through the manual will be playing your completed games, publishing them to the Explore section, and exporting them to share with others. I'll see you there.